Hello, well I've got a competition in this film with my son and it's all about getting holes in bells. Now it's an interesting sort of fact that the human eye can detect something that's not 100% in alignment. Very often if it's sort of within half a millimetre, maybe a millimetre, the human eye will sort of deceive and accept that everything's in a nice tidy row. But Equally, the eye can spot when something's just the tiniest bit off. And this is really where a challenge comes in, because, I mean, having made lots of belts, and it would be the same for any other lever worker, I've got pretty good at getting my holes lined up and spaced out. And you've probably seen, if you watch me doing the um, belt making films, I use little templates to help and to guide me to get all the holes nice and accurate. Now, obviously, a little bit of variation it's a handmade item. I think most people would accept a little bit of variation, but it's hitting a balance. Anyway, I said to my son, I wonder how can we get this absolutely spot on? What can we do? And we both set our minds on it. Now, I'm taking a more traditional approach and my son is taking a high tech approach. And it's a little bit of a sort of friendly competition to see who can make the better arrangement to get perfect holes. Because as we've all ever worked, we're always striving for absolute perfection at every point, at every stage. So I'll show you what I've done and then I'll show you what my son's been doing. Well, this is what I came up with and it's a wooden jig. And the idea of it basically is that you take your belt and you slot it. There's two sizes, inch and a half belts and inch and a quarter belts in width. You slide your belt down this wooden tunnel to the end. And then the idea is you mark it through these little tiny holes using this pointed awl. And what that will give you is a row of indentations on the belt. And I did one for, uh, as I say, inch and a half and another one for inch and a quarter. So the belt sits in really snugly, it can't move. And you've got like an automatic end stop here to get the right position for length. And the holes are all spaced at an inch. So it's your center hole and I've got seven little holes. So you do get a perfect row of little dots, little pinprick dots. And once you've got that, you can then take a lever punch. So let me just with the end of this one, I can sort of stuff it down a bit of the way, show you what I mean. So I just press in like that. And what you end up with are some little dots. If you'll see those on camera, which you can then punch out. So I'll take my anvil, just bring the camera around a bit. There we are. So I'll take my anvil, take my leather blank, and then carefully line it up over the dot. Oops. And punch my holes. Now, the good thing about this approach, ah, oh, nice row of holes. The good thing about this approach is that you get your dots in a perfect line and you get your dots in exactly the right position. Where operator error can creep in is obviously when you're punching because you've got to get that punch exactly over the middle of that dot. So there is a little bit of potential there. It's an improvement on what probably I had been doing with just using like an outline template, but it's not perfect and not completely foolproof. So, I'll show you next what my son has been doing because I think it's rather impressive and he's a clever chap. Uh, he's applied his brain to this and he's going to do them on the X-Carve machine. And here's Tom the cat keeping an eye on things. He can see me in my workshop. John is using Autodesk Fusion 360 and just making up the plans for doing the high-tech approach. So he's got the template for a belt being modelled here and he's going to produce it on the X-Carve machine. Actually John, it'd be quite nice if someone gave us a laser cutter, wouldn't it, to do this? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perhaps. If, Anybody if, listening? If you're listening and you have a laser company, you want us to do a film, let us know. <laughs> well, one can dream one, can't one? Indeed. We've got the X-Car fat way. Indeed we did. So at the moment, John's got some HDPE, which is basically like chopping board material, on the x carve, and he's just sort of zeroing it. Now, John's done a couple of modifications on this. He's put a Makita trimmer on the machine, and I think we may have covered that in an earlier film. And the latest innovation, and it's rather good, is this dust extraction system. So as you know, we've been going mad about dust extraction here. We've got a good blower sucker pipe and then these rather nice little fluid things for doing the quick links for taking off the air supply. So we're virtually set to go. Last little tweaks on the software that's going on now and then we'll, we'll set off on our way. Just as a little side distraction here, a Sortimo case. Finding these are really excellent for storing things like leather rivets or tool bits and things and it's uh, like a sort of organizer case excepting the lid is also notched and what it means in practice is and the little compartments come out but you can sort of shake it around turn it upside down and the little components will never come out their compartment it's absolutely wonderful uh, leather rivets they keep dead in their little box and you get different size boxes so of course you have great fun sort of designing them, organising them and goodness knows what. But jolly good to sort of mow. Tough, well made, not cheap, but to be frank, worth the money. Nice one. Looks good. Yeah, nice. Oh, and also a little hanging hole as well. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, a little bit of clean up. Just using a little diamond needle file here. Actually got this one for bowl turning hooks for sharpening the inside when you're turning wooden bowls, but it's great for things like this. It's a very fine monocrystalline diamond sharpening. Right, I think we're good as there. Don't want to make them too big. And of course we've got the hanging hook as well. Very good. Right, let's try it out. So, well, tool, that one, number 23. I have a nice bit of belt off cut here. We'll place the template on. So it fits very nice width wise, that's fantastic. And now, does that go in? And does it mark? Hmm. <laughs> Aha, interesting. Hang on, got the right one, yep. Ah, oh, that's going in. I think it just needs a little bit of clean, a bit more cleaning out, which mm. one can easily do, and besides, as soon as this has been used two or three times, we'll have it. So that's on the end. Look at that. You can get that on camera. But we have a lovely little row of inline ready marked holes with the exact tool I'm going to use to make the holes. Because what we can then do, if I pop this on the anvil, get my nylon hammer, I'll be able to line that up perfectly and we're in. Let's just do a, one more there. Yeah, that's, they get a little bit easier 
it once it's been worked in a tad. But we're getting lovely, perfect spacing of belt holes. There we are. And the actual sort of scope for any, if you like, operator error is so reduced because you've got the guide and the tool, the sharp edge of the tool, sits in that little cavity of the marking. So I'm getting really positive hits each time. I can just feel it sort of dropping into the little slot. And look at that, perfectly spaced, perfectly lined up belt holes. Good result, John. <laughs> I think I will quite happily declare you have won this competition. <laughs> well done. Well, I've actually got both of our templates here. So the top one is John's and then that one's mine. And you can see so daylight exactly through the holes. So I think we've both have achieved the same result. But I, I do think that John's is the clear winner because my one is dependent on you being able to get the punch immediately over the pinprick hole. Now, I've done so many of these holes now, I've got pretty good at it. But of course, like anyone, one can have a slight off day and not be quite within the millimetre or so. John, on the other hand, his approach using the plastic template with the punch that fits the hole precisely, you get it absolutely precise. So there's no doubt about it, in future I'm going to be using these templates. They fit my tools absolutely precisely and they do a magnificent job of getting the holes in exactly the right place. So John is definitely the clear winner on this one. Uh, but it's interesting isn't it? Different approaches, uh, seeing how people use technology and it's well it's all advancement really it's taking new technology and applying it to old things but anyway really pleased to have these i'll be using them to get nice lovely dead on accurate holes and i'll probably get people complaining they're too too accurate <laughs> you can't win can you anyway hope you enjoyed that one and thanks so much for watching bye bye then God, i've just come out the workshop and there's this rather nice large moon it's very bright. I think it's going to be one of these super moons. See all the craters. So it's this handheld, so it's a little bit, I'm trying to hold it, but it's obviously magnifying like crazy. Let's go right in. <laughs>